Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and me, Crafty Scrapper, here on YouTube and Instagram. And today is another episode of M Scrapbusters. And um, we are making what you have probably made before, years ago, little paper pumpkins, but we're not using orange cardstock. We are making them vintage looking. And um, we are also adding them to a treat bag for a topper. So I know this has been done. It was years and years and years and years ago when I first learned how to make paper pumpkins this way. And um, then of course, you know, back in the 90s, everybody tried their hand at treat bag toppers. But uh, we're gonna revisit this because it is treat week. Um, in the pilot household, we do not celebrate um, the holiday that's coming up. Um, we just stay away from all appearances of evil. <laughs> and uh, that holiday pretty much is. Now, I'm not saying that growing up our kids didn't dress up sometimes. They might have and they went trick-or-treating. But we never let them um, think that that was a part of uh, an evil occurrence or something evil. They never got to dress up as anything evil, gory, anything violent, anything like that. And, um, you know, they were cats and dogs and um, pumpkins and <laughs> things like that, even dressed up like Bible characters. Uh, a couple of years and then um, you know they would go trick-or-treating at their friends houses or their family's houses other than that we never d did the just going from house to house and when they got older they never did the whole um, egging houses and you know being spiteful things like that that they call um, a good time nowadays that is not they never participated in anything like that, and we don't go in for the gory uh, movies and things like that either. So, on my treat bag, if you have some special trick-or-treaters that are coming to your house, and you want to show them the best, brightest, and nicest side of this um, gory, evil holiday... <laughs> that it has become here lately. Um, I suggest making little treat toppers like this. And you can see what I have handwritten on my little label on there. And let's show them some glorified uh, candy this year. That's just my opinion. You do what you need to do. <laughs> and that is my little, I guess, rant on um, the holiday that is Halloween. We just we don't do that. Um, you'll not ever see um, any kind of spooky, haunted looking, any kind of projects on this um, channel either. I don't do that. Um, like I said, our family tries our best to stay away from all appearances of evil. That's biblical, and that's just what we do. Um, anyways, did not really mean to get, get off on my... Um, biblical soapbox there but this is why you know I had to explain this uh, there will be some that um, laugh or poke fun in comments and you know you'll just get deleted that, that's okay too um, <laughs> anyway we are making uh, paper pumpkins and I'm going to show you how I um, did this topper for this is one of those just the snack bag size um, like Ziplocs but the snack bag size so I will show you how I did that topper also and we are just using scrap paper I had some book page left over that I made this one with and then this is some craft cardstock that was just pieces over here to the right of my desk and I stamped on top of it then punched it out and made that one and this is also craft card stock nothing stamped on it and it's just um, made with a little bit of uh, inking around all the edges and then some uh, kind of highlighting around that uh, for the stems I used some of this 
brown hemp twine. You can use regular natural hemp twine if you want to. And um, I to make them, some of them a little curly cue, I used an old paintbrush handle and just kind of whirled it around quite a few times and just laid it off to the side to let it sit like that for a while with something heavy on top and uh, you'll get your little curly Q, Q, curly Q piggy tail looking stems um, or you could use some really fat hemp and put it back behind that would be cute too just one little piece of fat hemp behind it um, let's see here that is for another project <laughs> Uh, I have used the Carved Pumpkin, um, Tim Holtz Distress Ink, and Walnut Stain. And then this paper was some scrap from a 12 by 12 uh, pack. And this craft paper was some scrap also. And then I used just one of my little Sharpie pens to make some faux stitching around the little label. And my Corner Rounder Chomper. Um, you'll need an oval punch. Now, if you don't have an oval punch, um, you could, let's see, uh, if you have a Cricut, you can cut out just a bunch of ovals that way. You only need three to make one pumpkin. Um, or if you have, um, a digital template that's an oval and you can cut that out of cardstock and then put it on some craft cardstock or whatever your scrap is and just trace it and fussy cut the oval out. Um, there are quite a few different ways to achieve an oval. You don't have to have a punch. Um, oh, die cuts too. You, if you have oval die cuts, you could do that way. All right, so we have some craft cardstock here. I've got some craft cardstock that I had already stamped on here. And then... Let me find it here. I have some book page that I didn't use. Here we go. All right, so with the um, book page, I punch out this way so that my words are going up and down. So I'll just get three out of a book page here and then maybe I can get oh yeah oh it's wanting to be stubborn oh I can hide that good we'll, we'll be alright alright so when you're punching a book page of course book page is not uh, the strongest paper in the world so you might need to um, back that with some paper or something just so you can get a good clean cut out of book page. Now with my stamping, I was stamping this way and then I realized, hmm, I can get more ovals if I stamp this way. So I kind of messed that one up, but you'll get the idea. I'll just have to cut my craft paper. So I'm cutting like that so that the wording goes um, across this way. And I'm just kind of, um, OCD that way. I need I need that in my life. I need that kind of um, uniformity. I, I don't like when the wording goes sideways. Um, I was watching a crafter on YouTube the other day and, and she was collaging um, an art journal piece and the collage paper that she put down had writing on it and numbers and they were upside down. And she put it on there, and it was the most beautiful little art. But I could not get past that her letters and numbers and everything were upside down. I couldn't, I couldn't, I just couldn't get past that. I was like, nope, 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 nope. Put them the right way. Put them up. <laughs> uh, but that is just me. So if you are punching um, book page or if you're punching uh, something that has excuse me, writing on it, uh, some kind of paper, pattern paper, and it doesn't bother you, whatever. You go with whatever you like. You do not have to do it like me. Um, now I think I want to do 
one more because these are so easy. I mean, y'all, these are super duper easy. Um, okay, I've got the book page. I've got the stamped one. And then I've got just the plain craft one. And I want to get one more pattern paper out of my scrap here. All right, here's a pretty little polka dot. And let's see if we can get, oh yeah, we're gonna be able to get three out of this easy. This is an old um, Project Life card. So we will be able to get that out of there really easily. Ooh, I like that color. I saved that little half of a Project Life card for a reason. Mm, I love that, so pretty. All right, on that one, since it is already a little burnt orange color, I might just um, ink the edges of it with walnut stain. So, the hardest one to ink is, of course, going to be your book page um, because it is so flimsy. So, we'll do that one in just a minute. But on the regular craft paper here, I'm just each of the three ovals go around the edges of them and ink them as heavy as you would like, as light as you would like. And then we'll do a little bit of um, shadowing with a pen on these two to give them an even more little vintage feel and look. I might do that one just a little heavier in a couple of spots. And then this one, we have our washer and dryer going. So if you hear cutting on and cutting off and spinning and all that kind of good stuff. I've tried to um, keep it where you won't be able to hear all of that, but you know, I have to keep my craft room door uh, open, cracked a little bit, uh, because it gets so warm in this room with my um, studio lights on that I just is sweltering in here, especially during the summer. Oh my gracious. Making videos in this room during the summertime is like torture. But I mean, it's like a sauna, so I guess I, you know, get that whole experience <laughs> without having to go somewhere and pay for it. But it is a literal sauna in here during the summer. And I don't really know why that is. This room has um, a central AC vent in it, just like all of our other rooms in our house. But it is on the south end of the house, so maybe that makes a little bit of a difference, but whew, it is muggy sweaty in here during the summer. Now, we have been getting some really pretty fall days here lately as far as temps here in Alabama. And um, so that has been helping me out quite a bit as far as getting stuff done. As y'all can tell, I've been doing <laughs> like a video almost every day. But now this week will not be like that because I am taking a few days. We've got a singing convention we're attending and um, we are away for a few days. I have scheduled these in advance. So these were done a week ago and I'm scheduling these videos in advance so that you could have something to watch while I was gone. I didn't want to leave you guys hanging while I was off gallivanting in another state. <laughs> oh, babe. So on the um, book page, I put it on the edge of my tweezers and then put my finger back behind. So that gives the book page a little bit of support while you're going around the edges of it. And then, of course, you can also mix the inks too. I think that's what I'm gonna do on this, this book page is um, mix the walnut stain and the carved pumpkin on this just because I want a little bit darker of a finish than what I got on this one just to show the difference. You all usually like when I give you some different options to things, so I like doing that for you. 
get this one all inked up with my carved pumpkin and then I will go in with the walnut stain and just kind of do some heavy inking maybe on the fronts of them. I want to thank everybody that has been donating to my buy me a coffee. Y'all are so sweet. I get emails almost every day of somebody donating to our buy me a coffee and I just want to reiterate that every time I get a donation to buy me a coffee that is for me to use to get more stuff for this channel um, look at the difference in that see that's even more vintagey looking when you add a little bit of the walnut stain too on top of what you've already done with the carved pumpkin and then I'm just kind of going in the middle some maybe around the edge a little bit but mostly in the middle and then just kind of heavily doing around that way in this and then I'll do this one whoop a little heavy in the middle here Okay, and then ink edges a little bit more, and then the top. Okay, and for anybody that is wondering, these ovals are about, let's see, one and seven eighths long and almost an inch wide so almost an inch wide this way and then almost two inches long so if you're doing them on the Cricut or something like that and you wanted the same size that I'm dealing with that's the size or if you're picking out your die cut which one you're wanting to use that is it Oh, that is pretty. I like that. Just some walnut stain on there. Because I think, yeah, the little polka dots are kind of like a light pink. Like a ballerina pink. So that's very cute. I like that. And then I'm just going to ink these up. That one's good. I like how those look. We're good there. Okay. So, until we get to the treat bag topper, we're done with inking, so I'm going to push that off to the side. Get out your liquid glue, whichever kind you like. I have Barely Arts in my Sugar Bell bottle here. That is what I am using. And first off, if you've ever made these before, you totally know how to put these together. But for anybody that has never put them together, this is what you do barely put a little bit of glue and then you're just going to barely overlap them and I'm using my matte grid to kind of line them up and keep them straight and then I'm going to put a little line of glue and then uh, go out a little bit so kind of putting a little cross there in the middle and then I'll put my third piece in the middle of the two pieces, like so. Kind of move that, spread that glue out some that's there behind it, and just let that dry. Okay, and then we'll go to the next one while that one's drying, and do it. Now, if you have print or something on yours figure out of course which one you want to be the front and then just put your tiny little bit of glue and barely overlap them if you don't overlap them a lot at all you're going to have you know a wider fatter pumpkin if you put them more on top of each other you're going to have a taller slimmer pumpkin all right, and then a line of glue, and then I'm just going to tee it out some like that. And that gets us 
all taken care of for our middle piece. And just line it up in the middle like that. Okay. And then let's do this little pokey dot one. Which one do I want as my topper? Okay. And I'm going to use my grid on my mat that I've got here. And any of the products that I use in my videos, I have people ask, where did you get so-and-so, where did you get so-and-so? I usually tell you in the video, um, but even if I don't, if I've used it so many times and I forget to tell you, it is either at our shop, scrapbookingwithme.com, and I have that linked in my description box below, or it is from Amazon, and I have my Amazon storefront, of which I do, I'm, you know, I'm an associate with Amazon, so um, when you use my Amazon links, I will get a little credit for it. I appreciate it. And then when you're putting your top oval on, if you see it needs to come over some, of course do that before um, it sets. Now that is just going to be the prettiest little pumpkin ever. I love that one. All right, and then our book page one. And which one do I want as my top? I think this one. Yep, I like that. So you just barely have to use any glue. I'm telling you, just like the tiniest bit of glue on book page. So let's add that there and then just a fine little line and a T across there and that will get this plenty adhered. Do not need a lot of glue for book page. All right. Beautiful. Okay, so in that quick of a time, we have four vintage-looking pumpkin, paper pumpkins made. All right, and then let's get that twine that we had used or wound up up here. See, we wound that twine, and look how swirly it is. Love that. Little pigtails. I'm going to clip that off, and then we're going to use two or three of these, and then I think I will use one of these for one of them, a thicker. Um, you could also use lace or ribbon or anything like that for its little stalk. You don't even have to use hemp twine if you don't want to. Um, all right, let's get, I'm just going to use regular scotch tape. So just regular piece of clear scotch tape. And I am putting the little pigtail on the back. Oop, that's too long. Let's cut that. Got too big of a piece of tape. I forget how tiny these little things are. And I'm going to just place it back here, tape it on, and then get it how I want it. And then I'm going to put one more little piece of tape at the tip top to keep it where it needs to be. Now, if you want to keep this acid-free, of course, just use some kind of double-sided tape, I guess, and then put a piece of scrap paper or cardstock on top of it, and you could do, th do it that way. Cute. I love that. I love the little piggy tails. All right, let's do this little thick one here. Do I want to add that? Yeah, let's just add it to the plain one here. And thicker hemp twine will make the uh, pumpkin stick up or, you know, up off of the 
table or project or whatever you're working on a little bit more but it is cute cute stuff so let's try it out and see how it looks now see that's just cute I love that I'll fray out the end just a little bit <laughs> oh I love that one cute all right and then on this one I use two pieces and I really like that look I used two pieces of that hemp twine, so I will do that on this one. Let's cut this one in half and then just put them together and start twisting them together. I'm going to pull that one down just a little bit to get it even. Stevens with the other one. Maybe I need to go up a little bit. There we go. And then just kind of twist and twist and twist together. And then while they're twisted together, get your tape ready. Go ahead and put them on. Okay. And then you can untwist if you want to or leave it like that. See, I love that, how they're together. And you might want to put just a tad bit more tape toward the top so that they just stay right up against the pumpkin body there very cute and let's do this really twisty one on the book page here we go let's see I think I want to do it this way the other side looks a little more twisty to me And then you can always manipulate it around if you want to. And you could also put some fabric glue on this, like get them really twisty on the paintbrush handle. And then put some fabric glue on it and they would really hold their shape that way. So... Now, if you wanted to do, I just did some lines with a brown pen and then a, a white pen. If you wanted to do um, more of that, then you totally could, or you could just leave it as is. I am going to do a couple of little brown highlight spots and then some white ones right beside them. So I'm just kind of doing a arched line on both of the side ovals. I'm just going to do that on this one too because after I did all of the veiny pumpkin lines on that one I thought mm, I like them with just the highlight lines on them so I'm not going to do another one like that. That was just a little brown pen and then here is the little white Marvy pens that we keep in the shop. And you can do like a little dot. Let me get it started. That's the thing about a white gel pen. You have to get it started on something else. And then it's real easy to use wherever else you're wanting to use it. So I'm going to put a little dot there. Like little do dots. Oh, I like that. And then I will put another highlight line on this one since it's a little darker can't see the lines as much and then I think I will do some little highlight dots on this one and then out here on the book page it really soaks in these little um, white gel pens that really soaks in so you might have to go back and do that again and then this one I think I will do the little highlight dots too since it's already got polka dots on it that's gonna look really cute there and there oh that's pretty I still believe that the regular old craft one is my favorite. So there's the highlight dots I put on with that 
gel pen. Everybody needs a white gel pen, I'm just saying. And we keep those in stock because I'm forever using white gel pens. I love white ink sprays. Now see, you can't really see the white on that one because it's dark and it has writing on it. But we always keep white ink and white paint in stock at the shop because I use it so much. Very cute. I love those. So there are our little paper pumpkins. And then for the little treat toppers, I had this paper left over. Let me get it out here without knocking everything else off of my desk. I'm going to move these to the side. I'll bring them back at the end. And of course, we'll have some up close and personal pictures at the end too for you. So I had this paper left over from a big 12 by 12 pack that we have in the shop right now. This is that uh, Craft Consortium Wood Textures is the name of that one. And it has some of the prettiest wood grains and stuff in it that I've ever seen. <laughs> ever, ever. Look at that patina one. And then that one looks like, you know, something that's been painted 14 times or something. Beautiful, beautiful wood grain papers. So that was from that 12 by 12 stack. And um, we have that in the shop. I don't know how many we have left at this very moment, but I do know we have it in the shop. All right, so my treat bags are five inches wide. So I'm gonna go a quarter over that. So I have cut my paper that I'm gonna use on top at five and a quarter. All right, so whatever size width your treat bag is at the top, just go a quarter longer than that. And then cut it at four and a half. So your piece to go on top of your treat bag will be um, four and a half tall by whatever width your treat bag is. And mine is five inches, so I went five and a quarter. So four and a half by five and a quarter inches is what my topper piece is. And then I'm just going to fold it over and use my bone folder to get me a good crease there. And I rounded my corners. I like that look. You can do whatever you would like on your corners or leave them as is. Whichever you would like to do. All right, so I have, hmm, I really like the nail holes here. So I think I'll use that as my front. And I'm gonna use the walnut stain to ink my edges while I get ink all over myself. And y'all know me, I always ink the fold also. I'm gonna ink it on both sides. These take no time, y'all. So, so if you usually just get, you know, a handful of trick-or-treaters, this would take you no time to finish this. You have a few days, see? <laughs> uh, it would take you no time to finish it. And uh, maybe you've got a few kids at church that you wanted to uh, give a little goodie bag to for the upcoming holiday, you could do that also. And um, what better way to give at church than to give glorified candy with a little sweet message at the top. So there is our little topper there. That's all there is to it. It's kind of like a tuck for a junk journal. And then I'm going to, let's see, I think I might use this little pokey dotted one that I got over here. I love that one. It's so cute. And we're going to um, cut out a piece from our scrap also. Now this little piece, I didn't even measure this when I put it on there. This little piece is, that is one and a quarter by about, let's see, it's about right there, three inches. So one and a quarter by three inches. So I'm gonna cut that 
Let's move this over. All right, let's cut our length, which is three inches. And then one and a quarter there. Make sure that we're about the same. Yep, looks good to me. And then I'm going to round my edges, just these two, because the other two are going to be hidden behind the pumpkin, so you don't have to worry about these edges. And I'm going to do walnut stain and carved pumpkin on this little piece. So let's get that out. I'm going to go a little deeper in with the carved pumpkin kind of slide like this instead of like this like I usually do I'll slide that way and get it a little further in so there is our inking for the entire project and then my little stitch marks I'll go ahead and do those so that way when I start to write I will know not to go over my stitch marks so I'll go ahead and Put those on, just some little faux stitch marks with my black Sharpie. I have these um, listed in my Amazon storefront because they are my absolute favorite writing pens ever. All right, and then I will do the exact same message because it is the best message ever. And... and um, before I start writing, I'm going to look and see about where, you know, the pumpkin will be so maybe my writing won't be, um, obscured by the pumpkin. And then I'm just going to lightly at first do my writing. Now, if you do not like to write, handwrite yourself then by all means, you can type something out on your computer, um, anything like that that you want to do. But I am all for using your own writing, y'all, because, you know, one day, and I know this is sad to think about, one day we're not going to be here. And if our loved ones have our writing to look back on, that's going to help them through some times, you know? So, I always like to um, try to include some hand lettering in my own writing, even if I don't think I'm doing too hot that day, which this little message does not look the best in the world. I think my other one looks a lot better, but it is very hard to multitask doing this. It's very, very hard to talk and hand letter at the same time. So when I go back over this, because with white gel pen, when you're um, writing on something, sometimes you're not gonna get a very fluid um, look to it. It's gonna skip sometimes. And especially with this craft paper that I have, because it is some rough stuff. So I'm going to go back over my lettering, and I'm not going to do much talking. So y'all just kind of talk amongst yourselves while I go back over my hand lettering. There is that little label done. So wonderful. I'm going to put my pumpkin on with some foam tape. So I'm going to get my sticky scissors and kind of eyeball that foam tape. And I'm putting two little pieces on. And this also helps that little stem stay in place too. And we have this foam tape in the shop if anybody needs 
that. Everybody needs a little bit of dimension every once in a while. I'm going to trim that off because you'll be able to see it if I don't on the front side. And then I've got to pick that backing off. Okay. And then I'm going to get unattached from my pumpkin and use just some double-sided tape for the back of the little label. And just kind of center it up a little bit. Put your pumpkin up there and see if you need to go over or whatever some. I do need to go this way a little more. Okay, let's look at that while the pumpkin is stuck to my finger. Okay, I think that's going to be good. And then just pop that on to the edge of your label there. I just love these little things. Too cute. All right, and then to attach it on to your snack bag, I just used some double-sided tape, my ATG, and put it up against, and you can peel it off rather easily. See, you just put it up against this and on the back side also, and just tape it down to where you close the snack bag up like that and it comes off really easy and uh, whoever you give it to, their parents or somebody, might want to <laughs> save that part and that's why I put it on with some double-sided tape so it's really easy to take off. So that is our M Scrap Busters for the day. I know usually we only make one thing, but this time we made two different things. One just incorporates the other. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to see your little paper pumpkins uh, before the holiday is over with. So let me see yours. And if you give them to someone special, I would love to see pictures of that too. Y'all have a blessed day. Please make sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Click the little bell if you want to hear from me every time I put up a new video. You'll get a notification clicking that bell. Thanks so much. God bless. Bye, y'all.